Justin. Hello, my friend. How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm sitting here talking to a friend of yours, uh, Marvin Watson and Arthur Krim. Oh, well, uh, say hello to them, but sure will. Uh, Mrs. Daly had a meeting of 500 women last night, and they adopted a tremendous resolution for Lady Bird. Oh, God bless you. complimented her for her. Well, let me for tell her. Let me you, you tell her. her. You, wait a minute. You tell her. Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Oh, Lady Bird, how are you? Fine, thank you, sir. I just you, wanted sir. to tell you, Mrs. Daly had a meeting of 500 women housewives in our ward last night, and they adopted a resolution complimenting you upon your great patience and particularly your demonstration that you are a real first lady of our land in the recent incident. And thank I you, sir. Said they all uh, were just terrific, and these are people that all got one and two kids. Some of them have lost them. The one that uh, made the motion was Peg McKeown or just lost her boy, a first lieutenant, a Marine in, in Vietnam, oh. 20 years of age. But she, it was such a dramatic meeting. I peeked in a little bit myself, but I didn't go in. And these women were all uh, just up cheering uh, you and above all, your great ladylike conduct in the face of a uh, very, very uh, trying incident. So I, I want you to know that they're in there. They're sending you a copy of it. It's the Bridgeport Women, which is a, a neighborhood and where I live, and it's the most of the stockyards, and they're just real housewives, but they're real Americans. And well, that's such admiration for you. Do give Miss Daly my my gratitude and my affection. And um, Mr. Mayor, the, only, uh, the, the the really the bad thing was that there have been so many good, sensible suggestions made there. Well, we always hear the bad. We never hear the good. And there was some. All the good things they say are buried with us, you know. But the bad is always said. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice to talk to you. Thank you, nice sir. Talk to the president. And here he, here he is back. Hello, Dick. I said I peeked into that meeting, and there was 500 women on their feet, <laughs> and the, the, Mrs., the woman that made the, the motion was the mother of First Lieutenant Joe McCune, who was just killed in action a month ago. Oh. And, and he was 20 years of age, and he was a hell of our boys. And, and when then I wish you'd get your secretary, the colonel, to send, 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 send the name so I can write her. Well, we, we uh, it was what I called you about. I think you should get into motion your national committee and have the State of the Union sent to every elected official in America and then have a little note from the president, not on the political end of it, but on the American end of your State of the Union address, and then have the suggestion from Bailey that this, uh, you wouldn't have the State of the Union because they won't read it, but have someone digest the high points of it and then ask that they recopy it and send it to every precinct captain and every worker in America. Uh -huh. I think it'd be a hell of an idea. I'll do it right away. Well, you thing, you mean it? just digest the State of the Union and have it printed, that's right. Yes, but, uh, but if you had a little note from you to all the officials uh, telling them, you know, about we're all Americans, no uh -huh. political thing in it at all, and uh -huh. this is what I think will make a better American, uh -huh. and then they all feel good when they get something like this. That's good. And I'd, I'd run it all the way down to the legislators and to the governors and to the state senators and to the mayors and everyone else. The other thing is, can you take care of Barrett O'Hara in an appointment in the U.N. on one of those subcommittees like in Africa or that? He's not going to go back to the Congress. Our eight uh, ward committeeman voted yesterday afternoon that they didn't think uh, he should be re-endorsed for another term. Yeah, we'll find something, whatever you want for him. I don't know whether you and I don't know what well, they'll do there, but not, I'll... Not a, not a full delegate, but yeah. one of, you know those yeah. subcommittees, like uh, yeah. they get all the uh, uh, health sure. and they get all these other things. I'll sure, I'll and sure. And then that make it look as though we yeah. were trying to... I'll help him. Uh, and I'll uh, get right on. I'll get right on it this minute. Are you coming out to us on the 24th? Yeah, I won't do anything you want oh, me to we'll, do. Always. We'll have something very substantial on that night too. Or you're right after. Say, I'm a little worried about Shriver trying to build up all this stuff down here about going back to Illinois. Yeah, he wants. Uh, he'll run for anything. I think he, he, he leaked this. Uh, he leaked this story, you know, about the, to the Tribune about. Yeah. Uh, uh, thing. I, and there's some way that you could get him to talk to you and you tell him what he ought to he do. He was out what, here last night. Uh, what what, 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 do, you, what he, do you agree on? Well, he didn't agree on anything. He didn't know what he wanted to do himself. 
Well, I said, I, I understood you were all set with. I didn't say. He told me about, you know, you're and I yep. said, well, this is a great opportunity for you. What did he say? Well, he said, uh, he was so nice, meaning yourself. Yep. And I, I feel that, uh, that I'd like to get back into Illinois with all you people. Well, I said, <laughs> Mer Merlin. You remember Bob Wagner got into Illinois with, uh, uh, with uh, Bobby. And yeah. uh, that was the cruelest thing. I went along with Bobby. And Bob Wagner had enough sense to tell me that you better stop looking and listen. But I didn't have enough sense to follow him. Yeah, well, we... Now, you, you, you speak a little more tougher than Bob did, and you're a little more decisive. But you damn sure look after your own interests, because you're the only thing we got left in this country. Well, the, the, uh... And then he said, well, uh... I said, well, you know, this is a great opportunity. And especially <laughs> coming from a uh, president... Well, what do you want to do yourself? He goes, it's always, he said, well, I don't know. Well, I said, what the hell you ought to know? Well, what do you think he's, what he wants to do between you and me, he wants to run for governor. That's exactly and he what. Want, he wants to, uh, you to appoint Kerner for a big position. Judge, judge. Incidentally, no, not a judgeship. He was talking about the uh, defense secretary business, and I had the radio on because I, I'm, smart enough to know that when I turned the radio on, they can't do any taping of what I said, and I had it on pretty high, and what the hell happened, but uh, announcement that the great <laughs> fellow was appointed, so I said, well, you can scratch that, so, so you can start all over, so they, they started all over, and he said, well, would he take a judgeship? Well, I said, why don't you go down and ask him? What are you asking me for? But I said, in my opinion, uh, Kerner is a good governor, and if he wants to be the candidate, he'll be the candidate for re-election. And I said, I think he is, and I said, I think the president is in accord with that because the president needs help all over the country, and where he has a good, strong man running for governor, he wants to keep him in that position. That's right. what, would, what good would it do to the 68 ticket? No, I'm if for the Kerner. President would, if Kerner wants it, then you want Kerner. That's who I want, period. Uh, he said, well, what about the judgeship? Well, I said, you'll have to ask the uh, the uh, governor about that. We can give him that two or three years from now. Huh? We can give him that later, two or three years from now. The governor. Yeah. We can give the governor judgeship yeah. after he finishes governor. That's right. So he uh, left uh, asking me what I think he should do. And I said, well, I'm no international man, but I know that there's damn few people that are ever offered the ambassadorship of France. And if you could ever work out the uh, some arrangement with the old guy over there, you'd be one of the biggest fellows in the country. Right, right, that's right. And he says, and I said, then you could come back and run for anything. That's exactly. You right. might be even uh, considered in the '72 convention. That's right. And I said, uh, I think the. The president gave you good advice if you come back in 70 and you're a candidate for uh, governor in Maryland, you're almost a cinch. Well, he was going to go back and study it again and and come back and talk to me. He uh, he didn't he didn't know he didn't know about the senatorship and. Uh, let's don't let him get in that now. We will just cause trouble. We never will have a friend. This guy goes along the other side and helps us, and then if we gang up and try to defeat him, why, they'll just well, show there's no gratitude. about our fellows, though, they can't, they can't feel that we should have two Republicans for the next four years in the Senate. Well, I agree that's right, but yeah. they haven't elected that last one. <laughs> well, uh, we, we, you know, the fellow defeated himself. Yeah, I'm afraid well, so. Oh, yeah, I'm afraid so. Oh, the hell he kept, every time he talked, he open house and he lost 100,000 votes. Yeah, that's right. And I tried to tell him, and I tried to tell him to meet the H thing. I had on, but he wouldn't do it. He was ducking it, and everyone was whispering, which, I, this is going to kill this guy. Do you know when you're, when this fellow finishes, he's 78 years of age, with all the critical things facing this nation and this uh, world, a uh, man 78 years of age uh, is a lot beyond the biological expectation of the doctors and everyone else. And that, that, that's going to be a great issue out here, no matter who's the candidate. Well, he's in the hospital. And especially against the young fellow. He's in the hospital now. Sure, and, and he's liable to pass out before the election. I hope he doesn't. He's a decent guy. Do you think he wants to run for Senator Shriver? 
I think uh, very uh, truly we could get him to run for clerk of the circuit court out here. <laughs> well, he can, just he just feels he wants to get in politics. And can you elect him, Senator? Can you elect him? Yeah. I think we can elect uh, certain people that are mentioned. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I think we can, and I think that he'll be the you'll elect. <laughs> as you elected Turner four years ago. So I'll tell you one weakness in your armor. Well, there's a lot of weaknesses in it. Well, you just got one that I know of. You got one down here that I know of. Who's that? Your man, Rostenkowski, who is the is the successor to Tom O'Brien, is, pers is, is personable and is able, but uh, he's not a daily. And you ought to say, now listen, we got one leader. I'm leader of, of, of Chicago, and president is leader of uh, the Democratic Party in the nation and us, and you are my leader in the House, and you're the president's leader. Now, before you take a position, before you get out here and run horn around with every damn dissident element and every bad mouther, you go sit down and talk to that president. I have his word. I told him. You can just say, I told President Marvin Watson. Anytime Rostenkowski wants to talk to you about anything, that he can come in in 15 minutes' notice. And I want you, as representative of Chicago and Chicago delegation, I want them to be the most powerful in Washington. Now, they were when Sam Rayburn was there, and there's no reason why they can't be with you there. When Sam Rayburn and Tom O'Brien, they had a great combination. They did it. Now, I want you old-timers, and I don't forget some of these young fellows. I, I've, I'm trying to train them. I made them the chairman yesterday of the of the slate-making committee on state offices and the numbers of the Congress. And well, the advice I gave them, I brought them in. I said, Danny, there's one thing about it. You talk too much. Yeah. And well, I said, you know, the old-timers say, we used to say, don't talk too much because you'll have to retract too much. That's exactly right. Now, that's what... Don't get yourself... You get out. And the other thing is, you think because a newspaper man or a television commentator asks you a question, you've got to have all the answers. The easiest question, answer to a, those questions is, look, at, I don't know anything. I'll look into it. I'll give you the answer. I don't know what the right. Illinois delegation right. is going to do, or I don't know what I'm going to do myself. Right. I said, you, some of you young fellas, I had three or four of them in that I'm trying to train. Some of you young fellas think you have all the answers to all the questions. And I said, no one has that. I said, I, every day when they come in here, I say, honestly, I don't know the answers, but I'll get all the information, and then I'll talk to you later on. You fellas have a habit. And I'm going to see him again today and, and repeat. I said, Danny, you have a habit to think you have to answer the most difficult international questions, the questions involving the president and the administration. I said, you know we're demo. Oh, I'm for the president. I'm for the Democratic Party. I'll stand up. And I said, yeah, but sometimes you make statements. That what I want him to do, what I want him to do, I want McCormick is, uh, is uh, up in years and is a great fellow. Well, he should. Uh, Carl Albert's had a heart attack. I've got nobody up there. I've got nobody up there that is a leader. And the ones I've got in the country, I've got very few, like you. So well, I, want, I want to make him a leader. I want to give him power. I want to give him should, influence. McCormick and Hayden should be out of there. That, uh, what, but, the uh, uh, us, uh, what the hell uh, good does it do the party when we see him? I like both of them. I know them. But when you look on television, as we did the other night, and you see uh, men falling asleep and... You're, t you're saying this, talking about the State of the Union message, and uh, yeah, well, I, I, I didn't look like I, I, hope, I didn't look like I was asleep, did I? No, no. But, uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the leaders of the Senate and yeah, the House. Yeah. I hope that, you know, uh, when I'm around, uh, someone will tap me on the shoulder and say, well, "You're dick, get out of there because you, you're out of position." I may ought to quit now. I may be too old well, already, you, but uh, uh, well, you're you're a kid. <laughs> <laughs> the guy says, honestly, when you get up. Uh, uh, into the middle 70s and, yeah. and there. I, I think I, you know we, we we owe it to the younger people. Yeah. That's why I've been. We made eight changes in our 
organization yesterday. Listen, Dick, what we got to do, Dick, what we got to do, though, is you've got to equip somebody like Rostentowski to take up, over. Yeah. And you just, the first thing you got to do is say, now, God damn it, I want more power in that White House than anybody in the United States, and I want you to have more power in that Congress. You get with Johnson and you all work together, and I and want that done. You stay in touch with Johnson and Watson. That's right. Whatever they tell you to do, you Well, do. We, we, what do we all agree on it? I don't want to be a boss. I just want to get along. Yes, you do. What the hell? You're the leader. I mean, our friend... I mean